Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew a drop crouch bat swing jumpsuit with a V-shaped and a raised neckline design detail. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Tape measure, water erasable fabric pencil, a pair of paper scissors, a pair of fabric scissors, pins, rulers and curves, a matching thread, a matching long zip. I will use this black fabric for the neckline design detail. Some interfacing, four years of crepe fabric, pattern paper, marker pen. I will use the following measurements full length of jumpsuit, 16 inches, around ankle, 13 inches, shoulder to shoulder measurement, 16 inches. Sleeve length 13 inches, hip circumference 43 inches, bust circumference 39 inches. I will start by drafting the back pattern on this pattern paper. I have already drawn a margin of 2 inches at the top and on the left hand side of the pattern paper. For the back shoulder line, I will measure and mark 1 inch from the starting line downwards like this and I will square a horizontal line across. For the arm line, I will calculate my bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches and this is 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 8 inches. So from the shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches downwards like this and I will square a horizontal line across. This line is the arm O line. This side will be the center back of the pattern. For the back neckline, I will use 3.5 inches for the neck width and 1 inch for the neck depth. I will now draw the back neckline curve like this using my French curve. Next, I will divide my shoulder to shoulder measurement by 2 and this is 16 inches divided by 2 and this is equal to 8 inches. So on the shoulder line, starting from the center back, I will measure and mark 8 inches like this. Also on the arm hole line, starting from the center back, I will measure and mark 8 inches. I will now connect these two points together with a ruler like this. I will also connect these two points with broken lines like this. Next, I will calculate my hip circumference plus 1 inch for is divided by 4 and this is 43 plus 1 divided by 4 and this is equal to 11 inches. So on the arm hole line, starting from the center back, I will measure and mark 11 inches like this. I will add additional 2 inches to this. The 2 inches is for additional ease and also for seam allowance. At the lower part of the pattern, I will also measure and mark 11 inches like this. I will add additional 2 inches to this just like I did at the ammo line. I will now connect these two points together with a straight line like this. For the ammo curve, I will create a simple ammo curve like this using a French curve and a ruler. I 
I will now add one inch zip allowance to the center back of the pattern. I will add half an inch seam allowance to the neckline, shoulders and armhole of the pattern. I will measure the back neckline curve, excluding the zip allowance and also the seam allowance. And this gave me a value of 4 inches. I measured just this inner curve. I will use this pattern paper to draw the front pattern and the paper is on fold as you can see. I have also drawn a margin of 5 inches at the upper part of the pattern. I will measure and mark 1 inch from the starting line from, for the front shoulder line, like this. I will square a horizontal line across, and this line is the front shoulder line. For the armor line, I will calculate my bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5, and this is 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5, and this is equal to 8 inches. So from the front shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches downwards like this and I will square a horizontal line across and this line is the arm old line. For the front neck width, I will measure and mark 3.5 inches on the upper starting line like this and for the front neck depth, I will measure and mark 9 inches. I will now connect these two points together like this with a ruler to create the V-shaped neckline. Next, I will divide my shoulder to shoulder measurement by 2 and this is 16 divided by 2 and this is equal to 8 inches. On the shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches like this. I will now connect these two points together like this with my ruler. On the armhole line, I will also measure and mark 8 inches like this. I will now connect these two points together with a, bro with a broken line. Next, I will calculate my hip circumference plus 1 inch for E divided by 4 and this is 43 plus 1 divided by 4 and this is equal to 11 inches. So on the armhole line, starting from the center back, I will, starting from the center front, I will measure and mark 11 inches. I will also add additional 2 inches to this for the additional ease and same allowance. I will also measure and mark exactly the same value at the lower end of the front pattern. I will now connect these two points together with my ruler like this. For the ammo curve, I will draw a simple curve for the arm hold like this using a French curve and a ruler. The length of the back neckline curve is 4 inches. I will extend the front neck width vertically upwards like this using broken lines. On the broken line, I will now measure and mark 4 inches. This is the length of the back neckline curve. From the 4 inch point, I will now measure and mark 1 inch and a quarter towards the shoulder line. Like this. I will now connect it to the neck point, like this, using a slanted line. On the slanted line, I will measure and mark 4 inches again. From the 4 inch point on the slanted line, I will now draw a perpendicular line like this. The line should be at right angles to the slanted line. And it is 2 inches long. I will now connect the 2 inch points to the front neck depth like this. I will now add half an inch seam allowance to the neckline, 
shoulders and arm hole of the front pattern. I will now cut out the front pattern. I have already drawn out the outline of the design that I want at the front of the jumpsuit. I will now go ahead and make it bolder using a ruler and a marker pen like this. You can be creative about the shape of the design that you want at the front of the jumpsuit. You don't have to copy mine exact exactly. Using a tracing wheel, I will now go ahead and trace out the shape of the design on another pattern paper like this. I will now go ahead and make the tracing bolder using a ruler and a marker pen like this. I will add half an inch seam allowance just to the outer edges of the design. There is already half an inch seam allowance at the neckline and the shoulders, which was transferred from the original pattern that was traced out. I will now cut it out like this. I will now cut out the back pattern. Next, I will compare the length of the front and the back patterns. The back pattern is longer and I will trim off the excess at the lower end of the back pattern. Both the back and the front patterns are now about 19 inches long. This is the fabric that I will use to make the, the jumpsuit. It is a lightweight, soft, drapey crepe fabric. I use for yards. I use for yards. For this jumpsuit, it is very important that you use a lightweight, drapey fabric. That is a fabric that drapes very well. I will also use this black contrast fabric for the design at the neckline. Next. With my fabric folded into two, selvage to selvage, I will now paint the front pattern along the folded edge of the fabric, like this, since the pattern will be called unfold. Next, I will extend the front shoulder line, like this. I already have half an inch seam allowance on the arm hole, so I won't add any seam allowance to the end of the sleeve opening. So from the armhole, I will measure and mark 13 inches, which is my desired sleeve length. From the 13 inch point, I will also measure and mark additional 5 inches for the pleats that I will introduce to the sleeve. From the end of the sleeve, I will come down by 10 inches for the length of the sleeve opening and this 10 inches is inclusive of the seam allowance. I will now square a vertical line downwards like this up to the 10 inch point. From the 10 inch point, I will go in by 2 inches and I will draw a short horizontal line like this. Next, I will measure the full length of the jumpsuit starting from the neck point and not from the collar and not from the wrist collar. I will pin the tape measure in place like this. Then I will measure out the full length of the jumpsuit which is 60 inches. I will add extra 2 inches 
for Emmy allowance. And this makes the length of the jumpsuit a total of 62 inches. I will square a horizontal line across like this. And this horizontal line is the M of the jumpsuit. So from this folded edge of the fabric at the end, I will measure and mark 2 inches inwards like this. Next, I will calculate my around ankle plus 2 inches for E divided by 2 and this is 13 plus 2 divided by 2 and this is equal to 7.5 inches. So from the 2 inch point that I measured inwards, I will measure and mark 7.5 inches like this for the ankle. I will add extra 1 inch for the same allowance and I will mark the point. I will now go ahead and connect this point at the ankle. I will connect this, this point to the 2 inch line which I drew at the end of the sleeve opening. This point. But first, I will curve the 2 inch line at the end of the sleeve opening like this using a curve. I will now connect it to the ankle like this using an outward facing, facing curve that is a convex shape. So I will join it to the ankle like this with an outward, outward facing curve. This is more or less like a convex shape. So I will use this long hip curve to achieve the convex shape like this. Remember that at the end, I measured 2 inches inwards from the folded edge of the fabric. So I measured 2 inches inwards from the folded edge of the fabric at the end of the jumpsuit. I will now measure about 13 inches upwards from the 2 inch point for the length of the drop crouch. You can decide on the length that you want by simply measuring this cut directly on yourself or on your customer. The measurement should be taken from the ankle upwards. I will now square a vertical line upwards and a horizontal line. I will now curve the upper edge of the drop crouch like this using my free hand. At this point, I realized that I did not add the 2 inch aiming allowance at the end of the jumpsuit to the length of the drop crouch. So I will go ahead and increase the length of the drop crouch by 2 inches like this. And I will redraw the upper curve. I will now go ahead and cut out the front jumpsuit piece like this. So this is what the front jumpsuit piece looks like. This is the back pattern and the fabric has been folded into two, selvage to selvage. I will now go ahead and pin the back pattern to the fabric like this. Since I'm not cutting the back pattern on fold, there is no need to align the center back exactly to the folded edge like I did for the front piece. 
I will now place the front piece on top of the back piece, on top of the back like this. I will align it very well with the back. The center front should align with the center back and not the zip allowance. And the shoulders and the armhole lines of both the front and the back should also match up. I will now paint in place. I will paint the front in place, but I won't paint the upper part so that I can easily lift it up. Next, I will extend the one inch zip allowance at the center back down to the drop crouch. I will lift up the front piece and I will cut out the back neckline like this. Then I will now return the front piece and I will use the front piece as a template to cut out the remaining parts of the back pattern. So basically, the difference between the front and the back pieces are the necklines and also the zip allowance at the center back of the back pieces. I will now go ahead and remove the pins and the pattern pieces from the fabric. Next, I will go ahead and cut out the neckline design on the black contrast fabric like this. I have already fused interfacing to the wrong side of the neckline design piece and also because the fabric is a little bit stretchy, I have also fused interfacing to the neckline of the jumpsuit on the right side. The interfacing should extend, to, should extend right up to the, to the raised collar. I later did this. I will now align the design piece with the front neckline like this. Right side of the design piece is facing the wrong side of the jumpsuit. Paint in place, then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. After stitching, I, un I notch the seam allowances. I now understick the seam allowance to the neckline of the main front piece like this. I will now snip into these two corners like this, about half an inch snip. This will make it easy for me to fold the edges of the design piece. I will now take the fabric to my ironing board and I will press all the edges of the design piece in place. I will fold in the edges by half an inch. So now I have gone ahead to fold in all the edges of the design piece. You can either use this hemming gum to hold the design piece in place before stitching it or you can simply use your pins to hold it in place. So now I have gone ahead to do the stitching about one eighth of an inch away from the folded edges of the fabric. I did not stitch the raised neckline for the back collar. So normally, the next thing I would have done is to open up this collar like this and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. But I do not, I won't do this because I want the center back of the jumpsuit to have a press button. 
So what I will do is to fold the two pieces right sides together and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. I'm only using just one quarter of an inch sewing allowance because I want the collar to overlap a little bit at the back. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. So the collar will extend beyond the back neckline by about one quarter of an inch which I will use to to overlap and fix the press button in place. So I will set aside the front piece for now. These are the two back pieces, right sides are together and I have fused interfacing to the wrong size of the two back pieces because I want, because the fabric is a little bit stretchy and I'm going to fix a zip to the center back. So first, I will measure and mark where the zip will end at the center back. So from this point, I will measure and mark one inch zip allowance at the center back of the jumpsuit down to this dropped crouch. I will stitch in place first, after which I will now fix this long zip to the center back of the jumpsuit. So now as you can see, I've already fixed the zip to the center back. I will now place the front piece on top of the back piece, right side to right side. I will unzip the back piece. I will now paint the back and the front pieces together at the shoulder lines. I will also paint the raised neckline to the back neckline curve. After painting, I will take them to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So the raised collar will be pinned to the back neckline curve, like this. So now the stitching has been done. As you can see, I've joined both the front and the back of the jumpsuit together at the shoulders. I will now go ahead and overlock the raw edges of the same allowance. I will also trim off the excess zipper tape. So now I've done the overlocking. The collar at the back extends beyond the back neckline by one quarter of an inch on both sides. This will allow me to fix a press button to the center back of the jumpsuit. I have also overlocked the same allowances at the shoulder lines and the back neckline curve as you can see. The next thing to do is to sew the two pleats on the kimono sleeve in place. So from the neck point, where the shoulder line starts from, I will measure and mark 8 inches, like this. From the 8 inch point, I will now measure and mark 2.5 inches and this is the width of the pleat. Next, I will measure and mark 4 inches and this is the space in between the two pleats. From the 4 inch point, I will now measure and mark the remaining 2.5 inch for the second pleat. I added extra 5 inches to the length of the sleeve for the pleats. I will now fold the sleeve like this, making sure that the seam lines align very well. I will now stitch the pleats, the pleats in place totally, 1 inch on both sides of the seam line, making the stitch line about 2 inches long. I will do the same thing on this other side as well. So now I have already stitched the two pleats in place, as you can see. I have done the same thing for the other sleeve as well. It is now time to aim the lower end of the kimono sleeve. 
I will use this black contrast fabric as the facing material. I have fused interfacing to the wrong side of the two pieces and I have also pressed in place the half an inch seam allowance at the lower ends of the two facing pieces. Both pieces are 2.5 inches wide. I will now paint the facing pieces to the end of the sleeve, right side to right side. After painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done and I have trimmed off the excess facing. After stitching, I flip the seam allowances towards the facing material and then I understitch the seam allowance close to the edge of the facing fabric. I did the same thing for this other side as well. I will now turn the jumpsuit to the wrong side. So the right sides are now together. What I will do next is to sew the two side seams together using one inch sewing allowance. So I will stitch from the end of the sleeve opening down to the ankle of the jumpsuit. I will also stick the inseam together using half an inch sewing allowance. But before sewing the inseam together, it is advisable that you first aim the jumpsuit. So now the stitching has been done. I secure the facing in place with a needle and thread so as to have a neat finish. The two side seams have also been joined together as you can see. I end the jumpsuit first before stitching the inseam in place. I have also unstitched a press button to the collar at the center back. I paint the front and the back together, making sure that the center of the v-neck line aligns with the center of the zip. This will hold the front and the back of the jumpsuit in place, especially when sewing. So as to have a better fit for the jumpsuit, I have to do some adjustments. To do this, I need extra measurements. I need my shoulders under bust measurement, which is 13 inches. My around under bust measurement, which is 34 inches. I will now add extra 6 inches to my around under bust measurement for ease. I will now divide this by 4. And this is equal to 10 inches. You don't have to use as much as 6 inches for the ease. You can reduce this if you want a smarter fit for your jumpsuit. But I will advise that you should not use anything less than 2 inches for the ease. So on the jumpsuit, I will measure and mark my shoulder to under bust measurement, which is 13 inches from the neck point downwards. That is where the original shoulder line starts from, not from the raised neckline. This point is the middle point. So from the middle point, I will go ahead to measure and mark 10 inches that I calculated earlier on both sides of the middle point, like this. So from the 10 inch points, I will go ahead to stick down about 4 to 5 inches below the under bust line on both sides of the jumpsuit.
So now that has been done and this is the final look of the jumpsuit or my mannequin. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.